Bro, chronic stress can literally rewire your brain to focus on the wrong things. Stress can influence what consumes your focus. This can reduce productivity and motivation for long-term goals, which can lead to depression and eventually kill Kill your your dreams. dreams. (laughs) Today, we're talking about stress and focus and what you can do today to reduce that stress, increase that focus, and accomplish your dreams. Hey. Let's dig Let's in. Let's do it. <laughs> Bro. Bro. I'll never not like that intro. Same. If we hire... If we get a contract, well, let's say like Spotify, and they're like, hey, we want to pay you $10 million to keep doing this podcast, but you got to change that intro. I'll be like... Your contract. Yep, exactly. <laughs> no, money, no amount of money is worth replacing that. Anymore. That's right. That's right. Today we're talking about focus and stress. I'm Jonathan Noel. And I'm Brian Noel. This is Forms and Focus. Where we provide guided forms that manifest radical, radical focus. focus. Where we want you to be focused as boy. Nice. Well, here's what we know to be true. People are absolutely stressed out. Stats from the American Psychological Association, American Institute of Stress. If you have to have an American Institute of something, there's a lot of people. (laughs) And it turns out 75% of adults report symptoms of stress, including headache, tiredness, or sleeping problems. Sounds about right. I'm one of the few 25% who probably doesn't fall into this, bud. Yeah, it's true. One of the lucky few. Um, we're also looking at 80% of U.S. workers say they experience stress at the job. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure what the other 20% of the people working or what those jobs are. but <laughs> They're the ones up at the top. They're the ones either at the top or working at the dispensaries in Denver. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, this is my dream job, bro. <laughs> so 50% of U.S. adults say that stress has negatively affected their behavior. Oof. Like, actually yeah. how they act, how they treat people. It's like... Who they yell they at. have enough stress in their life to where they're acting differently now. That's right. So when you're on the road and you're just trying to get into a lane to get off and someone gets super pissed that you want to get in front of them, yep. and they start flicking you off. You'd be like, hey, you're part of that 50%. Um, also looks like 80% of Americans reported that COVID-19 has caused stress. <laughs> really? I mean, depending on <laughs> what part of the country or world you're in. That's true. Um, it would kind of determine how in that world you are. I mean, the first two months was crazy. The first couple of months, I was out of town. I was out of state. Yeah. So I thought for a second, they were going to start shutting down state borders. Oh. I thought I was going to be stuck in Texas. Oh, my gosh. It's worse places to get stuck, but It's true. Like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, also, 77% of U.S. adults reported feeling stress over the future of the nation, which is up. 66% from 2019. So people are stressed because of what's happening. People are stressed about, hey, what's going to happen? Uncertainty. Uncertainty. Turns out uncertainty might trigger stress for some people. Yeah, you know, and uh, um, next podcast we talk about, uh, what do we talk about? There's stress and then there's conflict and then yep. there's fear. Yep. So when we talk about fear, we actually do kind of a deep dive on that. It's going yep. to be pretty rad. So what happens? All this stress, bro. Everyone's stressed yeah, out. Yeah. So what happens with all the stress? <laughs> well, in the, we're doing some research. Looks like this is coming from Bernstein. Ber, Bernstein, twenty twenty one. When you experience chronic stress, the body makes more cortisol than it has a chance to release. Chronic stress has a shrinking effect on the frontal cortex, the area of the brain responsible for memory and learning. Well, and what's crazy is while that prefrontal cortex starts to shrink, guess what? Uh Uh-oh. It can increase the size of the amygdala. And that's not the body part (laughs) that you want. This isn't something you're trying to increase (laughs) Increase. the size of, bro? (laughs) It's not. (laughs) (laughs) Which can make the brain more receptive to stress. So Christopher Berglund from Psychology Today, this is what he says. He says, um, the domino effect that hardwires pathways between the hippocampus and the amygdala in a way that might create a vicious cycle by creating a brain that becomes predisposed with a constant state of fight or flight. Oof. Just living in that fight or That's flight. That's not a place you want to be in. 
living big amygdala. So there's a reason stressed out. You don't see commercials for natural enhancement of your amygdala. <laughs> That's exactly right. I mean, uh, there's a lot of content in our world that wants to increase your amygdala. So you are in a constant state yeah. of fight or flight. Yeah, easier to control. <laughs> That's right. So we're also reading, this is from Harvard Health 2021, your brain isn't just a single unit, duh, but as a group of different parts that perform different tasks, this is from Dr. Ressler, researchers believe that when one part of the brain is engaged, the other parts of your brain may not have as much energy to handle their vital tasks. You mean when you're super stressed and you're... Amygdalas. Your amygdala is pumping your prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for... It's dumping. Thank you. It's dumping. (laughs) (laughs) So when you need, when you're stressed out and you need to figure out how to get out of that stress, that's not what the brain's doing. Right. It's more energy being taken up on the wrong things. Man, that's crazy. So it probably starts to feel like a spiral. Yeah. I'd imagine. Well, here's what that spiral can lead to. Lamont 2020. Depression is associated with greater activation in the areas of the brain associated with generating emotional responses to stressors, which is the amygdala, and less activation in areas of the brain associated with regulating emotional responses. So generating emotional responses, amygdala, regulating emotional responses, your prefrontal cortex. So again, I've struggled with depression. If you struggle with depression, some of that may be caused by uh, increase the amygdala, yep. all these constant stressors coming in your life, yep. and that may be one of the causes. Could be. I think uh, if COVID is, I'm sure some people are definitely with the chronic stress. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah, I, it'll be interesting once we look back over the past couple of years. This is, uh, we're in what, April, as we're recording this right now, we're in April 22, but it'd be interesting to kind of see the effects yeah, that all this has had. Surely on, there'll be studies done for years. Hopefully. About, or not. <laughs> it might cover some stuff up, but <laughs> hopefully there'll be some studies on, yeah, the, they yeah, might long-term study, effect. Like, well, maybe lockdowns, you know, maybe, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, when people feel like hamsters, but anyway, different conversation. Different. <laughs> that'll be for our post-apocalyptic podcast where we go real deep into that stuff. <laughs> so this is um, coming from Neurochemistry of Focus 2020. There are two types of attention. So this is important mm. uh, when we're talking about stress, bottom up and top down. So this isn't the, right. the cool bottoms up, you know, <laughs> like bottoms up. But um, so bottoms up attention, bottom up attention, sometimes called exogenous attention, is when your sensory world is driving what information you notice. Mm. So basically you are more or less a victim of circumstance. Everything you are reacting to your surroundings. Yeah. Bottom up helps you when you're walking through the streets of New York city, <laughs> like just, you, you know, you got to navigate the lights yeah. and the people and the where to go and where to shift. But top, the opposite of that is top down, top down attention. That's right. Sometimes called endogenous attention. This is where it is your brain, which is dictating and directing how you should be focusing on your attention. Yep. So top down is, I am going to focus on this. Bottom up is, oh my gosh, there's like a lion in the woods. I, I need to run. <laughs> <laughs> or a notification on my phone. Yeah. Or someone like saying, but if you don't move, I'm going to punch you in the face. The point is, is if you let the bottom up control, have That's more right. control, your outside world controls you on the inside. Mm. That's not what we're trying to do. That's not what we're t- trying to do. Right. You are trying to be more top down. Whew. So then the outside inconveniences and distractions aren't dictating your focus. You know, it's funny. Um, if, uh, you know, you'll talk to people that work, you know, they, the white collar workers grind all day, but they're just sitting there answering emails. But when they don't, when they don't dictate their schedule, when they don't drive their schedule, they get to the point to where Unless they get an email, they don't know what to do. They're literally sitting there just waiting for the next email to tell them what to do. Because it's like, if, unless someone's telling me, unless the outside world's telling me what to do next, unless the media is telling me what to do next, yeah. unless whatever toxic relations I have in my life are telling me what to do next, I don't know how to move. That sounds exogenous. That sounds exogenous. Yeah. We're trying to, we're trying to top down. That's right. In, endogenous. Exactly. <laughs> so if that's the case, I love this. Uh, uh, so how do, we, how do we increase the top down or how do we reduce the bottom, bottom up? up. <laughs> One way that we want to start. It's going to be a surprise. This may be out of left field here. Reduce social media. 
What? No. So, some cool <laughs> studies, not really that cool. Uh, Journal of Affective Disorders 2017 found that more time young people spend using social media, the more anxiety symptoms they report experiencing. Mm. Yeah, that's not good. I know for me personally, when I uh, ditched Facebook and uh, spent a little bit more, t- well, about equal amount of time on Instagram, yeah. it was better for me. Um, for me, personally, yeah. Facebook for me is just marketplace. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and like that's it. That's it. So this is also a pretty interesting study as it relates to just media. Uh, so I read this study, and this was fascinating. Um, I think it's pronounced uh, Zaria Gorvet, BBC 2020. So they did a full study on uh, post effects of the Boston Marathon bombing, mm-hmm. and like I think like thousands of people were included in this study. But what they found was those who consumed high amounts of media coverage of the bombing actually experienced more anxiety than those who had family members or those who were actually in the race at the the bombing. So, which is wild. That's pretty intense, bro. I like that study a lot. Yeah. So basically, being next to a bomb is less stressful than watching bombs go off on TV first. 12 hours a day yes. for days on end. Which is insane to think about. So, <laughs> I mean, it really makes you go like, holy crap, like, what am I consuming? Yeah. I think, isn't that like what there was, they were talking about, they were asking um, <laughs> a- Amish, maybe, I forget, Mennonites, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. about why they're not worried about COVID. And they were just like, we don't have TVs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why they're not worried about a lot of things. Yeah. Because <laughs> well, we talk it's not about, shoved in their face. <laughs> yeah. Um, when we talk about fear, I had some stats on like what you die from and yeah. like the actual statistics of like dying from a shark attack and stuff like that. And uh, a terrorist attack was like one in 114 million. Oh, Something yeah. Something crazy. Oh, yeah. But we, we think about that a lot. Yeah, it's pretty wild. What so, okay. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> if we want to turn that, this is interesting. You're ready for this a tongue twister. If you want to turn down the bottom up, but you want to turn up the top down. Nice. <laughs> what do bro, we do? You did it. <laughs> yeah. Let's get that bottom, not, no, the top down focus going. That's right. That's right. Meditation makes sense. Calming the mind, becoming the master of the mind through meditation. Mm. So you're not letting the outside world control how you feel. That's right. Way easier said than done. <laughs> so good luck. <laughs> There's science that backs that up, though, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, Williams, 2018, new, uh, and new scientist, mindful meditation increases thickness in the prefrontal cortex and parietal lobes, both linked to attention Isn't control. Isn't that wild? So this is the enhancement you're looking for. <laughs> prefrontal. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> prefrontal cortex and your parietal lobes. We should lobes. do some ads of like, like, like girls being like, hey, nice prefrontal cortex. <laughs> Let's get the right thing. Let's get people Sex focused appeal. on the right things. Yeah. <laughs> so also um, uh, an app I've been using that helps with meditation and re- rewiring the brain is called BrainFit. So I'm a couple months into it. We're not sponsored by them, um, but uh, we're self-sponsored. <laughs> we pay for it and they give us a service. It's amazing. Yep. I love self-sponsorships. <laughs> yeah. But the app is incredible. There's a lot of meditation apps, things like that. Um, I haven't tried them all, so... I honestly can't speak to the other ones, but this one, um, it's really focused on rewiring the brain to increase focus. And um, I absolutely love it. It's fantastic. Yeah. Also reading and thinking activities. So according to neuroscientist Susan Greenfield in her book, Mind Change, when you read a novel, you read linear, linear, linearly. <laughs> <laughs> linearly. Lin- That's hard to say. <laughs> linearly. <laughs> Rather than sporadically jumping from tab to tab, slowly thinking about the information in front of us. So that makes perfect sense. <laughs> you, know, you know, have you ever been on a video conference call and someone flexes with how many tabs they have open? Why would you flex about that? <laughs> <laughs> Dude. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So like crossword puzzles, those are thinking activities. Right. Reading, of course. It makes sense. Um, like you're surfing the web. Yeah. And you've just got tabs open, email yeah, going back and off, forth. you know, you know, music's playing, videos, YouTube, you're listening, watching, whatever. Yeah. It's all going on at once. And you're on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. That's bottoms up. So uh, 
Also, physical activities um, found that physical exercise improved behavioral performance of the working memory task compared with the control condition. So in this study, I absolutely can't pronounce this. I think it's Suji uh, 2012. All the, um, all the links to uh, citations, all that stuff will be um, on the blog post. But um, yeah, it makes sense. We have, we've all heard, like if you want to improve your mind, improve yep. your mental health, you need to exercise. Yep. Obviously a ton of science behind like actually increasing the parts that you want to increase. That prefrontal cortex. Yep. So, bro, every, a lot of people are stressed. Yep. A lot of stuff is coming at us. It's coming at you. Yeah. So we have to be intentional about turning that down. Yeah. And exactly. Really trying to you position ourselves. To don't want to live an exogenous life where everything around you controls how you feel. Yeah. You want endogenous. That's amazing. So every time you are triggered, there's an emotion, good or bad. You should say, "Where did that come from? Did it come from?" endogenous exactly or did it come from exogenous you almost have to live your life like an unfeeling ghost like me (laughs) not letting anything that happens outside you control how you feel (laughs) oh man well i'm not that so on the spectrum of this and this you find yourself pushing this it makes perfect sense to me (laughs) all right bro i think that's it we got it covered all right man oh do the shout outs oh yeah that's true okay so uh, formsoffocus.com you'll find this you'll find all of the research yep. um, so and then also go to our YouTube channel and subscribe yep that's it subscribe hit the likes and do all the things and stuff and yeah. twitters and- I don't even think <laughs> 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 alright <laughs>